Good morning, Bucknutters. It is Tuesday, September 21st, 2021. I am Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 and Change. If it's Tuesday, that can mean only one thing. Dwayne Long joins us. Dwayne, we had a week of San Diego-like weather. Now we're being punished with some Ohio-like weather. Well, like you said, Ohio-like weather. Here we go. The dogs don't like it. The humans don't like it. The question of whether or not Ohio State fans liked what they saw at the shoe on Saturday is up for debate. Yes, the final score looked appealing. It was a slog to get there. Let's start out with the extreme positive. I just said before the show, I went back and looked at Travion Henderson's highlights, and they are even more impressive than I remembered. I'm trying to think of a better running back at this stage of their career in terms of, I always look at things in terms of the NFL. They probably wish they could put him on ice right now. Your thoughts on his first start, he apparently did well. We always thought, you know, you and I were talking about this kid from the start that, that, you know, when he was being recruited, that this is not just another really outstanding high school running back. This kid, he was special. And he's he's showing it, you know, even going into before this game, before this first start, whenever he was allowed to touch football, things happened. So this is not a real surprise. I don't remember who said this, but there's a term called if it's even he's leaving. This is the guy for that term. You can tell the Tulsa defenders had never attacked someone that could swallow up an angle like that. Here's the real question. We entered the season with Master Teague on Heisman lists. Then Mayan Williams started the first game. And now Travion Henderson seems to be the running back. What do you make of the future of the others? Ryan Day is not stupid. Obviously, you've got a special talent. You give him the football. So the other guys have just got to wait until there's an opportunity to run. I mean, we're, we're going to lose some kids, let's be honest. But what can you do about it? You can't just decide to give the other guys the ball just to keep them happy. You got you know, you want to try to hang on as many of them as possible. This is football. There's always going to be injuries. Uh, and those are some talented kids. It's just this one is special. You've got to keep him on the field and give him the football. And as far as uh, who's if, – if I'm leaving, I'm even – First person I heard say that was Randy Moss. But uh, getting back to this, yeah, it's just how do you not give him the football as much as possible, as many carries as he can take, the way he's running with football? You, you've got to give it to him. So, you know, your, your plan should be try to hang on to one really quality, one of the quality backups here. Just try to keep somebody around just to rest him uh, and, and just in, in case of an injury. A lot of times with a guy who has Travion Henderson's speed, now there aren't a lot of guys who do, but they're part of a fire and ice kind of combo deal at running back. He ran between the tackles beautifully, I thought. I mean, he's 215 pounds. I don't think there's a need to sub him out for running between the tackles. He showed he could do both. And by the way, he can get outside. The C.J. Stroud question. Now, he apparently has some type of lingering shoulder soreness slash possible minor injury. He was not crisp in the last game. Your thoughts on the quarterback situation? Why don't you tell us what you think will happen and what you would do? Well, here's the thing. It's been speculated about his shoulder injury, but now it looks like it's confirmed. Hearing about this, you know, people saying he's rubbing him his shoulder, and I'm like, then why is Coach putting him back in there? Well, now that we are there, and it's absolutely a fact that he's got some shoulder soreness, uh, you have to ask, why are you, you know, why are you pushing this when you've got a couple other kids that really could use some reps? You don't want to stick another guy on the field who has never been in a college football game again. It, it makes no sense. He's not performing. I mean, it seems to be getting worse because, you know, we got in a big argument about this last week uh, with Oregon. Uh, people were trying to blame the offense, and in particular him, he threw for 484 yards and three touchdowns. But this week, he was all over the place. He was high, he was low, he was left, he was right, he was long, he was short. He was just, it was a bad outing. That's not a, not the out, kind of outing that you have when you're on. And for whatever reason, and it appears 
that the shoulder is uh, is is sore. Now, here's what I think. the The only thing that makes sense to me is that Ryan Day is worried about hurting his confidence. And then if McCord comes in and he performs really well, then you got a quarterback controversy. So it's kind of a he has a delicate situation. He's going to have to finesse this. I don't know. I mean, if if uh, if Stroud has another bad outing, then he's got to make a decision. He's got to decide to give McCord some reps, and really, maybe he should anyway. Because, like I said, it's it, you got to have a kid who has been in. You know, practice is one thing. It's definitely different stepping out of high school into college at, with practice, dealing with the pass rush, the speed of the game. But when it's game time, when it's go time, it goes up even another level. Let's get somebody else ready. You need to have that backup ready to throw. Why have him come in when he has to come in and he's never thrown pass in the college game? Can't take another um, bad outing and expect to uh, stay in there completely, Not not for a whole game. If he has a bad outing this weekend, he may have sealed his fate because this weekend's opponent is Akron, which is not a good football team. It's one of the worst football teams Ohio State has faced in years. I think they're a seven-touchdown favorite. Regardless of whether or not C.J. Stroud was struggling before this, if we don't see McCord, Jack Miller, and maybe even Quinn Ewers, just know that they go to Rutgers the next weekend and Greg Schiano is licking his chops. Another thing that needs to be squared away is the defense. Youth is apparently being served. I can make an argument three or four of the best players out there are freshmen. Your general vibes on the defense right now, is it fixable? What do you make of the switch from Kerry Combs to Matt Barnes? Your vibes on the D. Well, I, I think there was, there was definite improvement, Dan. We, got, we were more aggressive. We were throwing blitzes. Everybody wants to get to the quarterback with four men, and we've had a, a quite a bit of success over the over, uh, – last several years um going back into the early um uh urban meyer years of just always having uh, good pressure defenses have great defensive ends but right now we don't but you it still comes back to you got to get to the quarterback however you have to do it get to the quarterback so adding blitzes I, it helped and by the end of the game i think what may have happened well, I think there were two things that happened. Um, I started getting some other guys in there. Uh, it looks like, you know, I was always a big uh, Tyleek Williams fan, and he looks like a veteran out there. He was in the backfield. I don't know how many times I saw him get penetration. He's chasing the quarterback. He looked really good. Jerome Cage is back. Vincent just hasn't been cutting it. Antoine Jackson is okay. Very a few pair. splash plays from either one of them, by the way. Very few. I, I can't remember a flash flash play by uh, Vincent. Vincent. He has just not been playing well. You bring those two, uh, uh, you got one veteran and one rookie in there, and they really had an impact. So uh, that's one thing. But I also think just wearing down from having to deal with the constant pressure, the the blitzes, I think that had some impact on uh, on how things started to break down there late when we started getting some good pressure on them. That that is the biggest thing. I like the defensive backfield. There's some plays given up, but for the most part, um, the defensive backs, especially at cornerback, I'm very impressed with what we're seeing out of Burke in particular. He already looks like a star. You know, say so he's making of a star. No, he looks like a star now. So you leave him on the field. We're seeing some good play out of out of Cam Brown. Uh, leave the cornerbacks alone. Just, just don't. I am just not sold on Shaw as the other, other uh, safety. I'm. I, I see him doing a lot of chasing, and I keep thinking about Donnie Nicky. How Donnie mm-hmm. Nicky was all. You never saw him in on a play. You saw him chasing a guy down after the play was made. I just don't see him as an answer back there. Maybe it is time to rotate Hickman back. I think we got more options at linebacker. Uh, where where Hickman is pretty much playing that position where he's going to be in between. I, I always think about it as a hybrid, but just sticking back there in a safety and let him stay back there and let's bring in somebody else at linebacker. That looks like something that should happen, but just the aggressiveness and let's it, this doesn't happen overnight, Dan. 
uh, football is one of those one of those sports that you got to be you got to be tight. You have to be. Everybody needs to know where they're supposed to be. They they're just learning these new things that are being implemented. I think we'll be even better on defense. That's what I'm looking forward to. We're not, as you said, Akron is a terrible team. So I'm not going to make too much out of out of Akron, out of the uh, defense dominating Akron. But I I just want to see this defense gel. That's the word I'm looking for, and that takes a t- uh, that takes some time. So uh, looking forward to that this weekend for sure. I can usually get a feel for the defense, what their rotations are like, who they like to play in certain situations down in distance. And I will tell you this, I have no clue when I'm watching the game now who they're going to have in there. Those roles still need to be defined, like you said. And then once everyone finds out where they need to be and they get settled, I do think there'll be some serious improvement. And this is definitely a good place to start because the zips have very little zip. We're going to take a quick break, come back and talk Cruton. All right, Dwayne, we are back. Offensive line recruiting is always in your wheelhouse. One of the apples of Ohio State's eye on the offensive line is Californian Ernest Green. He just took a trip to Georgia and was impressed. He's in the process of scheduling a trip to Ohio State. He is struggling to find a time because Ohio State has so many early starts, but I digress. Your thoughts on Ernest Green and where you have him on the must list? I just don't, you know, long time Bucknutters are not going to be as surprised at me saying this. I don't worry about guards. I just don't, uh, you know, there are very few Wyatt Davis, Josh Myers. Yeah. He came here and played center, but he was a guard. That's how he was recruited. And, uh, uh Donovan Jackson the guys that are like, okay, this guy, can do a lot of things he can move he can move people i just don't get excited about guards and i don't get excited about this one. he's not overly impressive he's a huge kid my lord is he huge he's long but he can't play tackle he does not move well enough to be a tackle a right tackle if he liked georgia that well that's okay with me locally there's a guy real near me right now josh padilla at huber heights wayne they offered him early he's a year younger he visited this past weekend. Your thoughts on Padilla? I, I like Padilla. Padilla moves really well. He's very well conditioned. Uh, the thing about it is I think he could be a center. And that I'd recruit tackles and centers. If if a inside guy can't be a, a, a center, then I'm just rarely going to get excited about uh, an inside guy like that. See, here's the thing. Right now, we're enjoying – the depth on the offensive line. We can afford to have an injury or, you know, with uh, get, get uh, somebody in a, in a situation where they're suspended COVID or whatever. We can afford that. Why? Because urban Meyer recruited tackles. Tackles could play guard. Guards can rarely play tackle. So you recruit tackles. You can move guys around. You got uh, Paris Johnson in there. Who's a future NFL left tackle playing guard. Because we can. We've got that kind of athleticism on the offensive line. Jim Bowman recruited guard after guard after guard. And we were constantly shuffling, trying to get five guys on the field, five good guys on the field. Now we're recruiting tackles. Let's not change that. Like I said, if they can't play center, they've got to be really special like Davis was, like Myers was, like Donovan Jackson will be. Very well said, Dwayne. Let's talk about a guy we featured on the site yesterday. Bill had a story on him, but Mark Porter had his introducing Ohio feature on Will Smith Jr., son of the late Buckeye star and Saint star Will Smith. He goes to Dublin Kaufman High School. He has offers from Marshall in Miami now, but he's an emerging prospect. What do you think of him, and do you see him as a potential Buckeye of the future? Oh, I absolutely think he could be. The kid is explosive. Absolutely. Just his first step, he's beat. So he's beat so many high school linemen and good linemen. Remember, that's OCC football. That's as good as it gets in the Midwest. He's going to meet big kids, kids that have been trained well and coached well. Big schools, his first step is he's – he's. here's the only thing. He may need to slide down to tackle, not that that's a bad thing. He's 6'3". He's young, though. He still could get to be that, that 6'5", defensive end kind of guy. He doesn't look like he's long-limbed. But it doesn't matter. 
the kid is so explosive. His closing speed is exceptional. Uh, and he's got good instincts. He finds the ball quickly. And that's something a defensive lineman, that's something we overlook with defensive linemen is finding the ball. Stuff's happening very quickly out there. So, uh, and he finds the football. So he could definitely, he's got to be on the radar. I think if it's close, we all would agree that we should take him. Speaking for myself, when I think about the national championship win against Miami, the first person that comes to my mind is Will Smith, RIP. We appreciate Dwayne stopping by. Have a good one, Lucknutters.